That's the bad news. It's going to get worse because this is the investigation part. Later comes the arrest part. Your attorneys are familiar with that. Hello, everyone. It's Joel Davis with United Medical Transportation Providers Group. You are the broker.com and home care access. And your Olympic athlete is on the road. On the road again. But while I'm sitting here waiting on some people, I wanted to um, shoot this video. Because uh, I want to share this email because I'm excited for my boy. This is... Um, if you watched the last video, I was uh, talking about one of my client providers who uh, is just sitting in a great situation. A, uh, a large player in his area, about 20, 30 miles down the road, used to be, used to be a major player, but now he's going out of business. And my boy is poised to come in, pick up the scraps. Didn't even have, didn't, didn't, doesn't even have to purchase the business. No acquisition necessario. No acquisition necessario. And um, I've been working with this transportation provider for a while, and he just, um, he's the type of dude you love working with, man, because they listen to you. You know, he's a young cat, works hard, uh, hungry, thirsty, wants to learn, doing his thing. Trust, trust us. He trusts the Olympic athlete. He doesn't say, hey, you're only 21 years old. You're six foot four, you're 215 pounds. I got time for you. You're only 21, you don't have enough worldly experience. He doesn't look at it like that. So kudos to him. So let me read this email to you. Uh, Cause he went and met with this company that's closing their doors. He went and met with them to uh, get some intel and uh, possibly purchase some of the vehicles and everything. So let me read this email to you. And keep in mind, I obviously got to, you know, blank out some pertinent stuff. So I'm reading it from my phone. So bear with me. It's a little harder to read from your phone than your computer. But he says, hello, Joel. I want to give you an update of what happened today, his meeting. When I spoke with blank company, I wanted to get a feel for why they were shutting down so fast. They revealed to me some key information that gave me a lot of insight on their decision to close down. I asked if they had any contracts with any facilities and they told me they were uh, they never had any contracts. That is just incredible. Absolutely incredible. You'll see why in a minute. Absolutely incredible. Again, bear with me. I'm scrolling my, with my formerly fat fingers because I used to be a fat man now. I'm a, Six foot four, 250 pound, 21 year old Olympic athlete with skinny fingers. So I'm having to scroll through my phone. So we continue. He said, um, they said that they serviced blank, blank, and blank. I could say this one. And motive care clients. Now I'll say motive care because I talked about him in the last video where we played hardball with motive care and it's so delicious it's so delicious because we are i'll tell you in a minute i'll tell you in a minute but i could i i gotta keep the other things private because this this cat is in such a sweet spot right now that i can't let other people because i work with other people in the state but i can't let them know where he's at or where he is cooking because gotta protect my peeps man but motive care so um he continues, uh, that explained a lot. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. They also said that they have been fighting with blank since 2009. So this company just coming out of the gate right now. I've heard of them before, but I, don't, I never had a relationship with them or work with them or anything. I bet they wish they did. So already coming out of the gate, these cats have been around since 2009. So probably older than that. So we know right now. Um, what's the math on that? 2009, so we're looking at 10, 14, what, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years-ish. So we know what, we know come out of the gate, they're at least 14 years-ish, plus maybe. They also said they had been fighting with blank. Again, I got to keep things on the DL to protect my boy. Uh, they let me know that they were blank. I'm going to, I got to admit that. 
they let me know that they were blank, which is clearly a set up for disaster. Again, I know, forgive me, forgive me. This is like FBI raid mar lago I gotta redact all that stuff. The owner told me that COVID, that before COVID, they had 38 wheelchair vans. So we know coming out of the gate right now, they were at least in business since 2009. So you know it was before then because they had a contract in 2009. And before COVID, they had 38 vehicles. 38 vehicles. The owner told me that before COVID, they had 38 wheelchair vans and downsized to just 22 vans. Nobody downsizes their fleet if it is profitable. Agree. In my opinion, since they downsized and are heavily blank, I'm going to admit that as well. They are not making as much profit. Agree. Just wanted to get out of the business before the ship sank. <laughs> Crazy. They have a lot of facilities that depend on them in the area, but blank. I got to leave that out too. So they have a lot of, a lot of facilities that depend on them in the area, but I asked if they have any private pay clients and they said they may get some private pay, but not a lot. Dude, you're a major player in the area. You have been around for at least 2009, probably before. You had 30, was it 38? They had 38 wheelchair vans before COVID. Man, 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 man. Um, he says, we are going to let blank know that we will not move forward in acquiring all of their vans and may look to get half of their fleet instead of some of their, and some of their drivers to come on board with our company. Sometimes being a large fleet may not always be the way to go. Amen. How many times have I said I would rather have five highly profitable vehicles versus 10 marginal, 15 marginal, 20 marginal. I want, I want profitability, profitability, profitability. I always talk about these cats. I know people love to brag at happy hour. I know they love to brag to their friends and family. Oh, we got 38 vehicles. How's that working out for you now? Oh, we got 38 vehicles. We've been in business since 2009. And you're closing your doors. You're trying to liquidate 22 vehicles. How's that working out for you? How does how's that conversation go a happy hour? My client provider says, it's like every video I've seen from you playing out right in front of my eyes. Amen. Amen. Maybe blank company should have hired should have hired the Olympic athlete that is currently suffering from climate change. Exactly. Exactly. Think about this. Think about this. We know these guys have been in business since at least 2009. Got 30, had 38 vehicles prior to COVID. So those are good stories. Those are good, strong stories to tell at happy hour. Now, liquidating, closing the doors. So think about two things. Number one, let's say they hit me up a year ago, at least a year ago. Let's say they hit me up at least a year ago and enlisted my help. What do you think the chances are? I could have reshaped that business. We think I could have reshaped that business to make them more profitable. And maybe it would have been smaller. Maybe you don't go back to 38. In fact, I highly suspect I would never get them back to 38 unless we were expanding in other areas as well. But regardless, well, let's say they let's say they retain my services a year ago. How much could that what would the ROI have been of retaining the services of a 21-year-old Olympic athlete? What would their business have looked like? Would they be closing their do their doors come March 1st? Liquidating 
I guarantee they wouldn't. Or second option, second option is this. Let's say they retain my services. And let's say we didn't necessarily reshape the company in terms of transforming it into a profitable asset that we want to hold on and further scale or grow or penetrate other markets. Let's say we just want to reshape it as an asset to sell. And maybe because it's so late in the game, maybe maybe we can't even sell it at like a at a nice margin or a nice multiple that we want, but we're selling it and we're in a much better position than just closing your doors come March 1st and selling everything for scrap. And from what I understand, all his vehicles are from 2016 and newer. Some of them go to, I think he told me in the previous email, uh, or when, maybe when I talked to him on the phone, he was telling me that the they go from 2016 to either 2019 or 2021. Well, either either way. So let's say he has this this company still has some vehicles that are two, two, 2020. If he financed them, then he still has notes on them because he probably financed them anywhere for from 60 to 72 months probably. So he still has some paper he's he has to he has to account for and pay for. So imagine if this dude, this company, if they had retained my services at least a year ago but no one wants to trust an olympic athlete maybe if blank company maybe blank company should have hired the olympic athlete that is currently suffering from climate change the struggle is real folks the struggle is real and i'm scared to think what i'm gonna have now you saw that we're being invaded by aliens right man if you if you guys are still watching fake news lamestream media you're crazy he says, we are looking to get 12 vans at the moment and get some drivers as well. Even if we can't service all their clientele, that it's not a bad thing for us. Exactly. It's not. I'll talk to you soon and see you at the top. Yes, you will see me at the top, brother. So the reason why I started to mention them in the last video, because I was talking about motive care quite a bit. Um... Here's what's beautiful about this. It is so delicious because this company that's closing their doors used to be 38 vehicles, now 22, closing their doors. Um, he's able to pick up assets on the cheap, basically for scrap, pick through the graveyard, find the best, the best opportunity. It's literally, it's literally a picking of the graveyard. Had that company contacted me, listed my services at least a year, I'd need, I would have, for this situation, I would have needed at least a year, but let's say they did. We could have transformed that business. We could have either transformed that business, put them in a position to be more profitable, uh, migrate out of the immediate area, grow scale, whatever, because that's an option, we could have done that. Or as a minimum, sell the business, so either way, they would not have a situation there right now where they're just closing the doors come March 1st. It's one thing if you're going to close your doors and you're a small mom and pop service, one, two vehicles. Difference if you're you're closing a shop, you used to have 38 and you're down to 22. Big difference. How's that happy hour conversation look like? And what's beautiful about it all is that you know darn well you know darn well when Motive Care comes back, and they're going to have to come back. This company that's closing the doors come March 1st was a major player in this area. And they did a lot of work with a variety of different services, but one of them being Motive Care. We just played hardball. Man, I want to slam my phone and just I get so excited about this stuff. You have to understand. I live vicariously through so, so many of you guys because I just still love this stuff, man. I love battling the brokers. I love battling the brokers. It's an old favorite pastime of mine. So I get to do it vicariously working through through you guys. So love it. Um, so anyways, we played hardball with Board of Care for a period of, uh, just recently, for a period of weeks. Back and forth, back and forth. And we went down this whole trail. I mentioned all this in my previous video. Especially with this company going out of business, Motive Care 
is going to circle back. They have got to circle back. And when they do, boom, 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 rich, free. My boy is going to have motive care by the balls. My boy is going to have these facilities. Even if these facilities contact them and they say, we're heavy Medicaid, you know, nominal private pay, we're going to have them by the balls. Even if it's just for a period of time, we're going to have them by the balls. And while we got them by the balls, we're going to squeeze out every ounce of profitability. Bottom line, bottom line. And as I say to all my people, we're going to ride that pony until the pony don't ride no more. And then when it don't ride no more, boom, we're going to shoot in the head. That's what's going to happen. And my boy is going to make money between now and then. And it's going to be boom rich free. And it's all about positioning yourself. Positioning yourself properly. White Walker Advisors, man. Wait, think about it, man. If that dude, if that dude from that company had reached out to me and listed our services, man, things would have been different for him. I guarantee it. Fact, fact, fact. Such a difference. Such a difference when you trust in Olympic athletes versus that White Walker nonsense and the White Walker advisors and all the freebie forum nonsense. It's just the stories we see day in and day out. Oh, JD, you think you're all that? No, I don't. I don't. But God is good and he has a sense of humor and I just love how things come together. It's like your boy Hannibal. Boy Hannibal from the A-Team. I love when the planet comes together. I mean, the timing could have been more perfect. If you go back and watch that video, I'm reading the emails in that last video from where Motive Care, we've already shut them down and they keep coming back. Keep coming back. Keep shutting them down. We're not interested. Here's why. I'm getting this and that and that. Bada bing, bada boom. And they keep coming. They find every excuse to keep, keep coming back because they know what's coming. They know this major player who had 38 vehicles, now 22. Boom, they're going out of town. They're going out of business. Going to leave a huge vacuum, huge vacuum in the marketplace. And who are you going to come to? You're going to circle back. And when you circle back, boom, your balls is ours. Your balls is ours. We love some balls. We love some balls. Hey, love is love, right? Ain't that supposed to be the way it is? It's all cool in the gang. Insanity. But what do I know? I'm just a uh, 21 year old, six foot four, 215 pound Olympic athlete. <laughs> just loving these experiences. I love it. All right, my peeps, it's time. It's time for this former, former fat man, now Olympic athlete, to go get some food. So I just thought I'd share that with you because I just love winning. Because when you're winning, I'll see you at the top. That's the bad news. It's going to get worse because this is the investigation part. Later comes the arrest part. Your attorneys are familiar with that.